Hey, what's up guys? This is Milton here. In this video, we will be looking at a long-term update of the new Synology DS216 Plus 2. The DS216 is a NAS server, which is basically a hard drive that you can access over the internet. It's similar to Dropbox or Google Drive, except the computer is in your living room and not on Google servers. No one can read your information or charge you monthly fees. For this video, I'll discuss what works for the device and what still needs some work. One of the reasons I decided to post a long-term review was because many reviews tended to focus on unboxings or just overall general first impressions after a few days. This really doesn't help you make a decision on whether or not you want to buy the device or if you can utilize one. Second, a NAS server is more for long-term use, something you tend to keep for years, unlike an iPhone that you replace every year or every couple of years. So let's dig in. The DS216 Plus 2 comes with an Intel Celeron N3060 64-bit processor. It's dual core with 1.6 gigahertz that turbo boost up to 2.48 gigahertz. I find the 64-bit CPU interesting as the server only has one gigabyte of RAM and does not give the option to install additional gigs. Now, there have been people on the internet that have taken the server apart and installed additional RAM, either four or eight gigabytes, with success. But keep in mind, that does void the warranty, so do it at your own risk. So when it comes to the one gigabyte of RAM, the question really is, how does the server handle tasks with just one gig? Quite well, actually. You have to remember a server is not a consumer desktop computer, so the need to have larger amounts of RAM on the server is just not necessary. From a server's perspective, the more RAM you have, the more users you can support. So if you have a lot of users doing a lot of work, more RAM may be required, but with only one person using the server, you'll be fine with just one gigabyte. I mean, it will be more than enough. For the CPU, 95% of the time, it works great. So for example, if your antivirus software is running at the same time you want to stream movies, Video Station cannot be used. There's not enough processing power to load the videos and scan at the same time. In the app, the videos will continuously load and never play. Outside of the virus scan, the processor performs very well. And loading of apps is fast. Faster than what you would think, but more on the software later. As you probably already know, the hard drive is one of the primary components that keeps the Synology going. And for this reason, the hard drive can make a big difference. Keep in mind, Synologies do not come with hard drives. You have to purchase them separately. This can be expensive, especially the larger storage hard drives. With this 216, I added two two terabyte Seagate hard drives running at 5,900 RPM. Also, be aware that only certain SSDs will work with the Synology. So make sure you check the compatibility list on their website. Overall, I've been very happy with this hard drive. They overperformed, were way above my expectations, and I have not had any issues with them being too slow. With that said, some people may want to opt for the pro edition of these hard drives, especially if you're going to be dealing with high-end video. I know there are people, such as MKBHD, that's upgraded to Seagate's Iron Wolf Pros, and you would get better performance. But keep in mind they are more expensive, so the decision will be up to you. The Synology comes with one front USB 3.0 port and two USB 2.0 ports, as well as an eSATA and a gigabit ethernet port. This NAS server comes with Synology's DSM operating system, and this is by far the best part about Synology. The software is fully featured and is software that you would see in a company, let alone your own house. I will go over the most popular applications, video station, media server, photo station, file station, and audio station. I'll discuss what they are and how you can use them. Then we'll discuss what's good about Synology and what's bad about it. First, video station and media server. Video station is a media app that plays movies, TV shows, and other miscellaneous videos from media server. It is important to note 
Media Server and Video Station are completely different applications. Video Station displays and plays content. Media Server, on the other hand, is responsible for transcoding the content into playable formats. So, for example, many movies come in MKV format. Media Server would take those movies and transcode them into MPEGs. Your experience with Video Station greatly depends on the application of the website you are viewing the videos. The Synology iOS app probably offers the best viewing experience. You can customize each library from recently added all the way to recently released. The website for Video Station is nice as well, using high quality thumbnails. The app for the desktop is great as well, but the thumbnails are noticeably lower quality. What do I not like about Video Station? When you transcode videos, Video Station creates a copy of that video in the new format. This is how transcoding works. The problem with this is you end up with two copies of each file, the original and the transcoded copy. There is no organized way to get rid of those transcoded copies once you are finished. This is a big problem because you end up with a video library that's twice the size that you need it to be. Another big complaint I have with Video Station is there is no great way of organizing home videos. It would be great if they had a naming schema that allowed you to organize videos similar to that of TV shows. Photo Station is, well, a photo server. It has all the stuff you need to get your photos organized. It comes with a good, not great user interface. Some say it's dated, I think it's fine. Like Video Station, Photo Station comes with an excellent iOS and Android app that can back up your photos. I have actually completely stopped using iCloud Backup because of it. Also, unlike Video Station, Photo Station allows for continuous flow of photos versus needing to go through hundreds of pages. File Station is not a file server. It's more of a file directory where you can control access and view your files. Each directory is a shared folder that you can give access to as many people as you would like. File Station is fairly straightforward. The one complaint when it comes to File Station is there is no ability to make folders truly private. As long as you are an administrator within DSM, you have the ability to access shared folders. In a corporate environment, this makes sense as there is a need to be an administrator that has access to everything. DSM is not similar to Windows or Apple, where you can set up multiple users, and each user has their own working environment, which no one else can access. This can be a frustration for someone that wants to use DSM for personal use. So let's say you want to give your spouse or roommates access to their own set of folders that only they can access. With DSM, the admin will always be able to access every file and folder, regardless of security permissions you place on that file. This sometimes can be a deal breaker for households as it does not allow for people to have truly private files onto the server that no one can view. Audio Station is Synology's audio server. The server is not as full featured as iTunes, but it gets the job done. Audio Station can store your music in an organized way for those that continue to download music. Similar to File Station, Audio Station is straightforward. You can organize music by folder, album, artist, composer, genre. The server also can have some nice features such as internet radio, smart playlists such as the Random 100. Overall, those are just a handful of reasons for why the DS216 is a great NAS server. My advice, if you were thinking about getting a Synology, I would make the plunge. The 216 is a great place to start. If you don't want to start with the 216, I would recommend to start with a NAS that has an Intel processor. That's it, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And please subscribe to my channel. There are more tech reviews coming next week. See ya.